All right, this is a really fascinating exchange that took place on the radio. I want you to listen to it and come to what conclusions you do. I tell the story of my friend Yesu Potam, what happened with his first wife, how she died and was raised from the dead, really, before she died a few years after that. And then a caller, educated, theologically astute man, student of the word, used to call years ago, Uh, We get into an interesting exchange about could this really happen? Why yes, why no? So take a listen. I think you'll find this very interesting. My friend Yesu Padam in India. Well, this is a little over 20 years ago. His first wife, Padmila, she has now been stricken with cancer. It's spread into her spine. She's now crippled and she is pronounced dead in the hospital after suffering for some time. She had had cancer seriously some years earlier. The doctors didn't expect her to make it. She did. Yesu Padam was thanking God for the years they had together, but finally she has now died of cancer. In the hospital there, sheet over her head, Yesu Padam by the bedside, thanking God for the years they had together. Another pastor there just crying quietly because of the loss. When suddenly, to their shock, Was it 15, 20 minutes after the sheet had been put over her head? Suddenly, to their shock, she throws the sheet off of her. She sits up, throws the sheet off of her face, and says, did you hear that? I mean, they're utterly stunned. She's been pronounced dead. Did you hear that? And what happened was she was in this beautiful place, heard music playing, and, and was calling out to Jesus in, in her dialect, calling out his name, when suddenly she found herself back in her body and jumped out of the bed and started jumping up and down, healed, raised from the dead, and healed to the shock of the hospital. I remember talking to other relatives of hers as they told me the story. We drove past the hospital. I said, Brother, here's where, where it happened. It, it shocked these Hindu doctors in the hospital. I, I met her. Uh, we we knew her for about two years, and then she she died, and went to to onto her reward. But she was raised from the dead. She was legitimately raised from the dead, and they weren't even asking for it. It was a miracle that God wrought. For a time, she was healthy, able to walk, and so on, and then got weak and died. It was I, as far as I knew, undetermined what the cause was. I assumed something happened with cancer again. So she did not live forever, and she was not healed forever, but it happened. It happened. These are gospel people. These are Jesus-centered people. These are word-based people. These are people living godly lives. Why should we say, I can't believe it? Why? Based on what scripture? Where does the scripture ever tell me that I should be skeptical? I should test. I should look carefully. But where does it say? I should be skeptical. Let's go to Mo in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you, sir, for calling the line of fire. You need to turn down your radio, Mo. There we go. You're on the air, sir. Yes, Dr. Brown. Yes, sir. How are you? This is Mo from Greensboro. Been a long yeah. time. Yeah, been a long time. I remember you. Are you still playing bass? No, that's been a long time ago. That was that was before I got saved. All right, but that just proves I remember you. How's that? Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Look, I have a problem with uh, people coming back to life uh, during this time because I believe it's true that once an unbeliever dies, his soul goes to hell, and once a believer dies, his soul goes to heaven to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. And for them to come back to life, physically come back to life, that would mean that their soul would have to reunite with their bodies again. Now, does the Bible teach that, that we can come back from eternity? Our souls can come back from eternity, heaven or hell, and be reunited with our bodies again. I have a theological problem with what you're, you're uh, posing. But it happened in the book of Acts. Right. And, and I do believe that I'm a sensationalist. I believe that they were revelatory eras. I think in those revelatory eras, like the first century, apostolic age, during the time of the prophets, during the time of Moses, those things that happened. Uh, but, 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 but hang on. Hang on. Let's, let's just, we're not talking about revelation. We're not talking about prophecy, revelation. 
your thesis that the dead cannot be raised because this, the spirit of a believer would go to heaven, the spirit of an unbeliever to hell, but the dead are raised in acts. So that refutes your thesis. Well, wouldn't that be the first century? Wouldn't that be a first century situation? Oh, wait, 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 no. The Bible doesn't distinguish about a first century situation. That's an unbiblical, you're, you're importing later theology okay. into Scripture. But, but here's well, my point. Your argument is that it cannot happen for certain reasons. Didn't someone's spirit, didn't Paul write absent from the body, present with the Lord already in 2 Corinthians? And yet things happen in the book of Acts. So if it happened in Acts, that refutes your thesis. Well, my position is that there was an apostolic age, and it was a revelatory age, where revelation was being given, just like the time of the prophets, the time of Moses. Uh, according to Luke chapter 22, the, the time of Moses and the prophets, and uh, he spoke in these last days by his son. Uh, oh, but no, hang, day, on, hang, hang on. Acts, the second chapter, in the uh, last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit. On all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy. There'll be dreams, visions. That's the last days. The Holy Spirit speaking and God speaking His Son, those are, those are complementary. Those are not in op- opposition to each other. Peter explicitly says the period of the last days will be the period of prophecy, dreams, visions. That's explicit. And then Acts 2 to, 2.39 says that this gift of forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit is to you, your children, and all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Same spirit, same manifestation, same gift. But, but I want to go back to your point. Based on your thesis that when someone dies after the cross, a believer goes into the presence of the Lord in eternity, an unbeliever goes to hell in eternity, and you cannot take that person out of eternity, what happened in the book of Acts refutes that. If it was one minute after the cross or, or 10 years or 1,000 years after, it's the same point. That refutes your, I mean, can, you're thinking, man, I know that you're a student of the word, elder in your church. I remember all that from our dialogue years ago, and it has right. been some time. But, but please, you should be able to see that what happened then refutes your argument. Well, do you think this, uh, Dr. Brown, do you think that men make mistakes like doctors, um, professional men like doctors make mistakes, and they may declare a person dead when they're not actually dead? You think that's a possibility? Sure, it's a possibility, but if someone was also crippled because the cancer had spread through their body and they couldn't walk for a period of time and they deteriorated and they were dead and all signs showed they were dead and then they got out of bed jumping up and down and glorifying the Lord and it brought a shockwave through the hospital and, and opened the eyes of Hindu doctors to Jesus, why would I attribute that to doctor's mistake rather than to the power of God. I'm a believer. I believe what Scripture says. Okay. Well, we differ there. I appreciate your input. Yeah, well, thank you, sir. God bless you. Appreciate that. Now, now here, here's a, a man just from conversations years ago. Obviously, I don't remember every caller, but I, I remember Mo, Calvinist, and a, and a clear-thinking man. We, we had great conversations in my earlier years on, on radio. I just think it's fascinating. I want to encourage you to reflect on that to reflect on that conversation we had. And if Scripture, if Scripture is your guide, all right, if ultimately we're going to decide based on what Scripture says, not based on experience, based on Scripture, show me where Scripture says these things are not for today. I'll show you many places where they are to continue. Show me where they're not to. When Paul said, earnestly seek prophecy, don't forbid tongues, show me where he ever reversed that. In the Bible not based on later theological reflection, but in the Bible. That's what I'm asking for. And that's why I can quote many cessationists who say, hey, the fact is, we have to admit that there's no clear statement in Scripture stating cessationism. Fascinating. 